So for the last week I've had my sim slapped inside of Samsung's fresh new Galaxy A54. A mid-range smartphone that costs from 450 quid here in Blighty, making it half the price of the Galaxy S23 flagship. But it is still brimming with lovely tech like a super AMOLED screen and an upgraded 50 megapixel camera sensor for better low light shots. But unlike that Snapdragon powered S23, you've got one of Sammy's own Exodus chipsets stuffed inside of the Galaxy A54. So big question is, did the Galaxy A54's performance or any other bits of it drive me to drink? Well, I mean, I've drank an awful lot this week anyway, that's just because I like booze. But did the A54 make me want to get even more t than usual? Well, here's my full Samsung Galaxy A54 5G review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, this 6.4 inch may sport a slightly smaller screen versus many modern mobiles, but those chunky bezels surrounding it means this phone is no more hand friendly. And at 202 grams, it's no lightweight either. If you want something a wee bit more compact at this sort of price point, you may want to check out Google's Pixel 6a instead, although that is set to be replaced with a Pixel 7a in the next couple of months just to further complicate matters. And Samsung, in full modesty mode as always, is offering the Galaxy A54 in awesome colours. Awesome graphite, awesome white, awesome lime and awesome violet. And this here limey one is definitely my favourite of the bunch, even if I wouldn't quite describe it as awesome, more a bit lush. But beyond that retina blast and uber poppy finish, the rest of Samsung's design is fairly standard. Just like the S23 before it, there's no design flair or aesthetical flourishes to speak of, it's rather unremarkable. If I was being kinder, I'd probably say it's functional without any risk of you getting genuinely excited by looking at it. However, the A54 is at least built from Gorilla Glass 5 front and back, which so far is still in perfect nick, even though I've been jamming this phone into a pocket with other phones. And sadly, it is just a plastic frame sandwiched in between rather than metal or more glass. But again, this has survived completely intact. If you were to fumble and drop the Galaxy A54, however, I reckon some big old chunks would be taken out of that pretty sharpish. And the Samsung Galaxy A54 is IP67 water and dust resistant as well. So you can drop it into a sink or a bubbly bath and it should survive just fine. That's still quite a rare feature at this sort of price point. Not many other mid-rangers offer this level of water resistance beyond the Pixel 6a, unless you're having to hate yourself enough to actually buy an iPhone SE. So the Galaxy A54 looks rather similar to the S23 and the software that Samsung has slapped on here is also near identical. One UI 5.1 has been lovingly smashed on top of Android 13, serving up that distinctive Sami style from the side scroll and apps tray to the busy but well-ordered notifications panel. I gotta say, that UI feels really slick, the animations are smooth, everything just flows beautifully. However, all of my usual One UI gripes are present and correct, like a nasty wee heap of Brussels sprouts more on a perfectly good Sunday roast. I'm not talking anything major, but for instance, Samsung still insists on doubling up on almost every Google service. Smart home shenanigans, contactless payments, health tracking, even the ruddy keyboard, which I immediately remove and replace with Gboard whenever I review any Samsung smartphone. And of course, everyone's favorite blood pressure tester, Bigsby. You've got two ways of doing absolutely everything on a Samsung smartphone, and it just feels really messy. And likewise, Samsung is still shoveling on plenty of crapware like LinkedIn, Facebook, booking.bloody.com. Thankfully, this can all be wiped out though, nice and easy. I've seen a few wee bugs in my week with the Galaxy A54 as well. A couple of times it just straight up rebooted, just decided it could not be bothered with life anymore. And I frankly know how you feel, A54. And one day for a few hours, the Google Discover feed decided it just couldn't be asked either. You could swipe as much as you want, it just was not showing up. On the plus side though, this mid-ranger should last you a good few years, as Samsung has promised four Android OS updates and five years of security updates as well. Bananarama. And I do make good use of some of Samsung's additions, like the routines, the always-on display, and that gaming mode. My Samsung Galaxy A54 review model is the 128 gig version, that's the 450 quid base model. If you want to double that space, it will cost you an extra 50 quid, which is still nowhere near as bad as upgrading an iPhone to more storage. And it's not even strictly necessary, because you do have a micro SD memory card slot stuffed away inside this thing too. The A54 also supports eSIMs as well as physical SIMs and as far as the connectivity goes, no worries there, you got 5G on top of Wi-Fi 6. So this lovely lime slab is absolutely packed with great features and functionality for this sort of price. 
Now Samsung never usually disappoints when it comes to display tech and sure enough the Galaxy A54's 6.4 inch Super AMOLED screen is one of the best you'll find at this sort of price. Fire and crisp and poppy Full HD Plus visuals at your peepers. You've got HDR10 and HDR10 Plus support just like the S23 flagships. So while the A54 really makes the most of more vibrant pics and videos, it can also spaff out beautifully lifelike images when streaming on the likes of Netflix. I streamed a lot of video on this thing over the past week, absolutely no complaints whatsoever to be honest. The auto brightness does its job nicely and on that maximum brightness it tops off at a thousand nits now brighter than last year's model. So certainly outdoor visibility, not an issue. And the refresh rate tops off at 120 hertz and I can't really mourn about the Galaxy Air 54 stereo speaker setup. I've watched many, many episodes of Vinland Saga on this thing while I was washing the dishes, cooking curries, and even with my darling daughter practicing her recorder in the adjoining room, I did not have to slap on some headphones. You got full Dolby Atmos support here, including Dolby Atmos for gaming, although both of these are switched off by default, so you'll have to go into the audio settings and poke them if you want that lush, natural sounding audio. And sadly, no, there is no headphone jack here on the Galaxy A54. It's a feature they scrapped the previous generation annoyingly, but the Bluetooth 5.3 streaming was absolutely perfect the entire time. You got the usual solid codec support as well. Now, one of the most intriguing aspects of the Galaxy A54 is its brains, namely Samsung's very own Exynos 1380 chipset making its debut appearance. And by intriguing, I actually mean terrifying because the downfall of last year's Galaxy A53 was that crappy Exynos performance. I was therefore ever so slightly concerned that this year's handset would be a repeat mistake and another juddery almighty mess. But thankfully my fretting was all for naught because the Galaxy A54 can handle any app you hoy at it, even a pair in split screen form without falling on its arse. Gamers should be happy enough too, as demand and fare like Genshin Impact can be run on medium to high graphics settings with a stable enough frame rate. And this blower doesn't heat up to a troublesome degree, even if you're dodging work with a proper long stint on your Android title of choice. However, much like Google's Pixel phones, which just happened to use a chipset co-designed by Samsung, I did find that the Galaxy A54 got a wee bit toasty at times just with general everyday use. There didn't seem to be any particular reason for it, I'd just be doing something innocuous like browsing the web, slip it back into my pocket and be like, ooh, now my thigh feels a wee bit sweaty. As for Samsung's gaming mode, which I mentioned before, it is a bit basic compared with what you'll find on Xiaomi or Realme phones, but it can block notifications, etc. So it's certainly worth checking out if you're going to get a bit of Genshin on the go. And as for the battery life, well, this is another area where the Galaxy A54 delivers with gusto. Samsung has crammed a 5,000 mAh capacity cell into that lovely lime frame. And I found this always lasted me a full day, even when I was making liberal use of those cameras, Skyping or Zooming with the fam, etc, etc. I generally get around five to six hours of screen on time, stagger into bed and still have at least 15 to 20% left in the tank. However, it's not all still in use because the wireless charger does top off at 25 watts, which feels rather lethargic compared with the likes of Xiaomi's recent Redmi Note smartphones. And on top of that, you don't actually get an adapter bundled in the box with the phone and there's no wireless charging support either. Now, the final upgrade for the year 54 is Sami's all new 50 meg camera sensor with optical image stabilization. Now bigger than ever for improved low light performance, allegedly. Unfortunately, my test of the Galaxy A54's optics didn't get off to the most illustrious of starts as I realised that the shutter speed wasn't particularly swift. So if you're attempting to shoot a living subject that does not obey your orders, then expect lots of blurry snaps of them just as they're turning away or buggering right off. Still, if you do actually manage to time it right, you'll often get a great looking portrait snap with the added bonus that you can piddle about with that background bokeh action after you've hit the shutter button. While colours aren't always naturally captured, I've got to give props to the A54 because my test photos were quite pleasing to the eye, even though shot with less than ideal lighting. If you're dealing with harsh contrast, it's rare to see any oversaturation here. The A54 spaffs out well-balanced pics, even in the face of bright lighting. And in more ambient light, things don't get too soft. It's not until evening time that you'll get noise creeping in, although Samsung's night mode can help to brighten and sharpen things up a little. You will again struggle with moving subjects, however, ending up with blurry or disfigured pics like this. As well as the 50 meg sensor, the A54 serves up a 12 meg ultra wide angle shooter that's basic but not particularly bad. 
It comes in handy if you want a different vibe or you're just trying to capture something absolutely effing massive. And that third lens is a 5 meg macro shooter if you fancy a bit of extreme close-up action. And as always with Samsung smartphones you've got a plethora of bonus camera modes including the obligatory food mode if you like to snap pics of your dinner and post them online before cramming it into your face. And it certainly makes edible stuff look even tastier by boosting the tones and textures. And there's my own personal favourite, the fun mode, which is just so much darn fun that I might have just hemorrhaged from enjoying myself too much. Samsung blows are usually reliable enough for your home movies as well, and if you swap to video mode you can shoot up to 4K Ultra HD footage at 30 frames per second. I was certainly happy enough again at this sort of mid-range price point does a great job, crisp visuals, clear audio pickup, and respectable stabilisation. And last up is that 32 meg selfie shooter, which like the rear cam, does a decent job in all kinds of lighting, complete with a screen flash feature for low light that mostly just blinds you. And if you want to shoot some video using that front facing selfie cam, well again this tops off at 4K resolution, which is still surprisingly rare. For a mid-range mobile a lot of them do top off at full HD. Again the audio pickup's absolutely fine and I had no troubles using the A54 for Skype and Zoom and all that online video shenanigans. So that right there is my full final frank review of Samsung's Galaxy A54 and I gotta say making it to the end of this week has been a massive relief because I was worried that the performance was going to make me absolutely tear my hair out, poor choice of expression and just hoy this thing out the bloody window. But thankfully that performance turned out to be a massive upgrade over last year's model so if you've got the A53 I'd say definitely grab the A54 if you want to save yourself a bit of stress. And the rest of the phone I really got on with as well, solid media chops, generally dependable optics and good solid battery life. Wee bit of software jank aside, very enjoyable indeed. So that's my thoughts on the Galaxy A54 5G, but what do you guys reckon? Have you been using this as your full-time smartphone as well? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!